Good evening, all. I wrap Stan of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap up, and this wrap up is for Thursday. And we're sitting here now at the 18th of November, 2021. Wow, it's hard to believe I keep saying that. And we're pushing the 520 time frame. So in the stock market, you can see it. You don't need me to tell you. You're going for all-time highs. Now, here's the interesting thing. For those of you that watch seasonal cycles, where the market tends to do different things over and over, uh, we are in one of them in the S&P where the market typically rallies between now and the 6th of December, and it's done so 15 years in a row. Now, that does not mean it's going to do it 16 years in a row, so just understand that. My point in mentioning this is there's a strong seasonal tendency to rally at this time of the year in the S&P. That is the one that should be the standout performer. We'll see if it can do that. When you look at the uh, energy cycle here, okay, China released some of their strategic reserves, Sleepy Joe got to use President Trump on this. I'm not the one that ever brought up that the president was going to release strategic oil. I don't think he had to. But I'll call it Sleepy Joe because the time to have done it was minimum two weeks ago. At least you can get the oil and prices, gasoline before we get to Thanksgiving. Now, they, they can produce all they want. They're not going to give you the break at the pump in front of Thanksgiving. Why would they? I'm, I'm the operator. I want to make the profit. Okay. He'll do it afterwards? Well, that's why. The market's breaking on its own. I don't know that we have to do any of this right now. Interest rate futures sort of just drifting here. Notice we haven't heard anything, by the way. The president spent time today with uh, the head of Mexico and, of course, Canada. Our two big trade partners. No press conference. Please explain to me why there's no press conference on this. It does that make sense to you? I know Mr. Trudeau, he was going to do his own out of his embassy. I'm sure that Mr. Uh, what is it, Obador, is, he's going to do his. What about our president? you got your two big partners. You can't have a press conference. I just don't get this president. I get the ratings. I get Camelia Harris's ratings. I understand all that. I just don't get what we're all looking for. For him to do because he doesn't deliver on the simplest of things. I am being critical, not of a Democrat or Republican. I am being critical of the man. Don't write me that I'm being political. That's not what I'm saying. When you take a look at the S&P, look at how the market's still moving to the upside here. Take a look at what's going on as this market's trying to lift itself a bit as we're moving up You've been in this consolidation range. Is it going to break out of there? Again, seasonal say it is. We have a trend with higher lows, higher highs. We're still in that part. When we put on moving averages, <coughs> I'm so sorry, I'm coughing here. Um, we have got the uh, averages under the market. I thought we were going to run to that when we lost the embedded reading. We didn't so far, and guess what the market has done? Let us count the days. God, it sounds like a poem. All right. If we get rid of Friday, both numbers are back over 80, over 80, and over 80. You re-embedded. So until you lose this reading, with a reading under now 79, what's the target? It's like a magnet. Upper Bollinger Band, new all-time high. That's what I'm looking for. doesn't mean I'm right. But that's what I'm looking for as a chartist. Are we going to pull the NASDAQ with us? Possibly. You can't count Friday's action. You know that because we don't know where the market's going to finish. But we can go to Thursday. Both numbers got back over 80. They weren't there before. So not the same plan. But like the S&P, when you lost the embedded reading here, you didn't go to the 18-day average. So these are the two strongest of the indices. The weakest is the Dow, which got down there, and it certainly doesn't look like any of the other charts. I think you'd agree. If anything, it's in a bearish phase. Lower highs, lower lows, momentum down and bias down. What about the Russell? Not in a bear phase, but not in a bull phase. Higher high, lower low, and momentum and that down. So the strengths in the other indices at this point. The VIX is useless right here. Why? 
it's up, but it's not affecting the S&P and the NASDAQ. It's affecting the Russell for sure, as you can see. So I'd be, I'd be just watching it, trying to figure out what's going to happen, and you're caught in no man's land, and I want to come back to that. You're, you're caught in no man's land here anyways, between the upper and lower band, but you're really stuck between the 18-day average and the upper uh, Bollinger Band. In the 10-year, I'm sorry, 30-year bonds, I'll have to play these to the end because the open interest and volume doesn't shift yet. You're still in a bear phase, coming back for a correction in between the 100-day average and the 18. The market is still oversold. I don't think you have anybody doing anything right here. In the 10-year notes, same thing. It's oversold. You already got down to areas here, and you're not getting to that bow in Japan. I think there's been short covering. In the dollar index, we had a number of days over the upper bow in Japan. Let me come here. Here you were. Here you were, right? Two back-to-back. -back. It's still an upside breakout as far as I'm concerned. These were both over the top part of the quadrant. It began back over here. You could get a pullback. What's wrong with that? Nothing. If you lose the embedded reading by getting a reading under 79 tomorrow, it puts into play the possibility of going back to the 18-day average of closes. You'd want to be, at least the way I teach charting, not staying with long positions if that took place. The euro's the flip-flop. Look at how it's turning itself around here, and it's already lost its embedded reading. Now, stay with me. Uh, this is Thursday. Both numbers are under 20. Under 20. Under 20. Agreed? Watch this. They'll even be, I believe, again under 20. Well, it doesn't want to work. I just was talking to uh, myself saying, I've got to put new batteries in this thing, and I'm going to right away. But tonight, you're losing it. Losing it intraday is not the same as losing it on the close. Any settlement in the slow stochastic that results with a reading over 21, time to be out of shorts, the market's likely to try to make a run to wherever that 18-day average of closes is. In the British pound, the market ended this downtrend right here with the 22 reading. Look where it's at. I'm looking for the 18-day average of closes. I don't feel too bad. The market's climbing up gradually working its way there. In Bitcoin, boy, did that fall fast. Look at how much that market is down. You're back to 56,000. You know, 56,845. You were just, please understand this, you were just at 69,355. So in just shy of a week, you've lost $10,000 on Bitcoin. I mean, may not be much to you. I, this is not a game that I can handle money-wise. I don't know many people that can. That's an awful big move. You're talking 8 to 10% of your values back and forth like that all the time. And I know what you're going to tell me. You're going to say, but this is the buying opportunity. I get it. Uh, in the Brent versus WTI crude, still here at the $2.80 area. And if you look at the Brent, well, you're bouncing away from the lower band. Just what I teach in my courses. You hit these bands, that's the zone where I think the pros come out. You can go through them again, but you're in that area. WTI crude, the same thing. When we get to heating oil, same. And you know what I'm looking I'm looking outside my window. All I want to see is cold. When you get the cold, there'll be demand for the heating oil. And the same will happen in the nat gas to you. And nat gas is fighting a battle right now, right here, at the... Um, 100-day average of closes. Now, this market fell because we've had mild weather. Instead of getting that real cold weather, we didn't get that. And that allowed the market to catch up with storage of gas as to closer to a five-year average. So that's put the pressure on that market. You put it all together, you have a pretty interesting time. I'm already creating for you my special gold report. I, if you were in the webinar today, we had a lot of people there, and I'm going to do that report. I'm just about, I'd say, 90% through. I hope to get it done and out this weekend for everybody. So uh, you'll be able to go and see that as to what I see. And I'm going to include in that report this time for you, I'm going to put in not only futures, I'm going to put in the spider ETFs on it too, GLD and GDX. So you're going to get a full array when I do that report. 
You know, one of the things that we do at Linen Associates is we write a lot. The staff there is phenomenal. You get reports throughout the day. Ideas on trading, be it options, futures, and spreads. Technical and fundamental analysis. This is what people come to us for. Want to see what it is? I'd like to give you a free trial for two weeks. Call us. We'll put you on the free trial. Can I make it any easier? 866-973-2077. I'm Ira Epstein. Have a great day.